Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Good morning and welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast. I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and I'm here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome, Dr. Reese, and how are you today? Happy New Day. I'm always good. It's a great day to die. It's a great day to die. It's a great day to live. It's a great day for anything, you know. <laughs> so how was your week this week? Did you trigger anyone? Oh, I definitely did. <laughs> you did, huh? <laughs> I did. And I think the interview that I had at the public access station, there was a lot of triggering points in there. So you mentioned um, that they edited pieces of it out. Yeah, they did. They did, huh? When you get edited out on public access, you know you're triggering. Yeah, no kidding, right? That's like, I've seen things on there that, you know, blow your mind, yeah. especially out in LA public access. But um, yeah, <clears throat> you know, it's just, you know, people are programmed for this medical monopoly. And, and, you know, when you go against that, some people with their limited beliefs will, will take that as dangerous. Yeah, because they see their doctor as an authority figure. And, you know, a lot of people are afraid to, you know, uh, fight authority. So they just listen to whatever the doctor says, because they trust them, you know, they figure, oh, he went to seven years of school, he must know something. It's the same as lawyers, you know, just because you went to school doesn't mean that you uh, are well trained and that they they've taught you everything you need to know you're taught a specific curriculum and it's like cookie cutter and a lot of people got to realize that when people go to school there are still a students and then there are c students and then there are d students and they all graduate and they all go out and practice so you could be you could your doctor could be a c student you know, he could have just made it by. And, and this is why you have malpractice and you have a lot of people getting harmed by the medical monopoly, because a lot of these people, not only are they getting poor training, they're not even, you know, they didn't even do well in that poor training. <laughs> they right. were just, they yeah. were just average. So, well, yeah, my cousin always used to say that to me. Don't forget, there's always the C students, and that's why you get real bad doctors. Yeah, so. it's a good it's a good point. But it's yeah. ultimately, it's the curriculum, you know. The yeah. governing board is going to train them for their interests. Right. And the and interest it, is not to heal. Yeah, and it's called allopathic medicine, which is different than Ayurvedic. This is different than herb, Chinese herbal medicine. It's different than holistic medicine. It's different than naturopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. Allopathic is the, the uh, symptom-based, you know, mentality. And, but, and they don't even mention the other modalities that are practiced in other countries around the world that have good results. Right. You know, and this is why people travel to other countries to get medical treatment sometimes because they're uh, what we have here in the U S is, is kind of a joke. It's, it's become a corporate capitalistic system that is just all about profit and not about healing anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that it ever was maybe before the American medical uh, association came in and took it over. And, you know, and people who don't know Rockefeller, John D, the original Rockefeller had a lot to do with putting that together. Uh, and he had a lot to do with investment in the first big pharma companies. Right. So, you know, it's the same people who have been, you know, running this world then are, are now running it, you know, same families, same mentality. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we have a, a good episode today. You, you must have triggered a lot of people because you got a lot of questions uh, on, on the social media. 
And um, so we were lucky enough to have a full episode where we answer your questions. And, uh, you know, so let's, we can get right to it if you want. Let's go. All right. Let's do it, man. All right. So this one comes from John on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting one. There are a few interesting ones here this week. I really like it. Um, in your latest interview, you mentioned that you like to upset people. Why? Is there a deeper meaning to your statement? Yes, there is a deeper meaning to my statement. Like why? First of all, why do you like to trigger people? Well, I'm not per. <laughs> what I say is automatically going to be controversial because it's going up against limited beliefs. So that's the first thing to understand. So it's not like I'm calling people out of their name. I'm not purposely offending people. It's just the information is automatically offensive to certain people because it's right. against what they're programming. Right. But why I like it is because it's part of mindfulness. Right. Which is part of this Reese reversal system is part of the three macro methods, mindfulness. If you're getting triggered and you're getting hot and bothered by something, you have more work to do. Right. And so if I, if little me is creating a pretty deep emotion in you, then you got more work to do. And so I'm um, showcasing, I'm showing you yourself indirectly and not everyone's going to understand that there's levels to this. Yeah, no, I agree. Sometimes when you do trigger somebody, it'll, it'll motivate them to either go out and do their own research, right? And try and prove you wrong. And then they end up finding out that you were right. You know, just like with the oils, right? Trigger somebody. I can't believe he says you can't eat or drink oils. I, I did. I said, I'm going to go check that out myself. Sure enough, man, I went and Googled it and oil oxidation is a real thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and there were five, six articles about it. And I'm like, okay, so he's right, you know, but a lot of people won't take that next step. They'll just get triggered. They just get mad and then they'll just attack you. But I, I figure if you, you know, I'm sure you trigger 10 people, if you can get one person to go out and do their research and find out that you were right, you may not get an apology, but you may end up with a new a new fan, a new follower, somebody who's like, all right, if he was right about this, maybe he's right about the other thing. But again, that's one out of 10. Right. And then, <laughs> but then also what happens is it puts me under fire. That's a whole yeah. other thing. Oh, because some people will try and cancel you. Right. And, but not only that, but they'll, they'll call me names and stuff. And mm -hmm. so I'll get the charlatan, I'll get the quack, I'll get the snake oil salesman, I'll get the fake doctor. I'll get the irresponsible person stuff. And a lot of that is um, what's called poppy tree syndrome. Mm. And that's where people are offended by confidence. Right. And so my favorite example of that is going to be Muhammad Ali in the 1960s. Mm. And of course, there was a, a lot of racial tension back then, but even still he was coming out and he was saying i'm the greatest i'm pretty i'm gonna beat him nobody could beat me you know float like a butterfly sting like a bee and people can't stand that empowerment right, right. and so right. people in their ego project onto that and say they have a big ego right but it's really the other way around because you don't know if the per other person's acting. Which, right. Right? Yes. And they are. So, you know, the ego is the energy behind the action. It's, it's, an, ener it's an energetic thing. It's not someone that's cocky or confident or arrogant. It's the energy behind it. Right, right. 
you know? Right. Because someone with no ego can act a fool on purpose. Yeah, absolutely. They can go out and perform and be that character. You know, we know this from the professional wrestling world. That's right. You know, and they end up where people love to hate them. You know, they love to hate them. And, and Muhammad Ali, you know, he also became a controversial figure by becoming a draft dodger, like a, a, a conscientious, you know, he would not go to the draft. They put him in jail for it. That's right. You know, and, and that made people uh, dislike him even more. But when he came out, what happened? He's a hero right? Then he becomes popular. Then they love him because they found a batter guy for him to go up against like Joe Frazier. Joe right. And, and, and another, you know, another example is Floyd Mayweather. You right. Know, people very much dislike Floyd Mayweather and he doesn't really talk boisterous. He just lives this fancy lifestyle. Right. You know, he, he puts out the image that he's a rich bachelor. Mm -hmm. Right. And people can't Stand that and so the typical term that people use over the last 30 years in the streets is a hater right when you start calling somebody names and professing that you don't like them because a b c and d because you think they're too cocky or you think that they're too this or that that's on you that's not on the person. Right. They're just being who they are. Right. Yeah. And so there's a term for it. Poppy tree syndrome. It's very popular in Australia and stuff. It's when you're chopping down the tree because you subconsciously, subliminally, you want to chop down their tree because yeah. you can't stand that they're ahead of you. Yeah. And it's the same thing. I mean, I would much rather go out there and speak my truth and, and get some haters than get no reaction at all. Right. Right. I mean, at least you're making people think you're, you know, you're bringing out an emotion in them, which is a good thing. Right. Because right. again, sometimes those emotions can lead you to change. Right. If a person is self-aware enough to say, why am I triggered by this? What, what about what Kevin said upsets me? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then they do a little deep soul searching, but like we said, that's only one out of 10. Yeah. So the answer to the question is why do you like to trigger people? Because you're breaking their uh, limited beliefs. Mm -hmm. And you know, the deeper meaning is. And not for nothing, Joe, but when somebody doesn't like, what I'm saying, or they perceive that they don't like me, typically they go promote because they want to tell other people. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Again, that's and all publicity is good publicity. You know, it's the old saying, all these old sayings are just, you know, true. So, all right, that's a great answer. All right, let's get to the next person here. We have Rhonda on IG. Oh, this is funny. She says, I have a seat reserved for your event on November 5th, but I'm a little nervous about it. I have had chronic pain and illness for the last 10 years, and I'm told this is what you do and talk about. But how? Why? Do you know magic? I do know magic. <laughs> I'm there to perform magic tricks. Right. Except no. they're not instant magic tricks. Yeah. I mean, I'm in the miracle business. So through my studying and through my obsession of the human body, I have a full understanding of how it works. So if someone is to give me their symptoms, I and my team who I've trained can figure out what's going on with the body and social um, reverse engineer it so that we come back to the root causes. Right. Plural. Cause it's almost never one cause. It's always a multiple. Right. And once we find the root causes, then it can be reversed. 
Right. And that, that so takes time. It does take time. It takes about 120 days. And that's why our program is 120 days. So this person coming to my event is going to either leave with a lot of hope and say, holy crap, I have a way out or they're going to be offended. You're One right. or the other. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Or, you know, they will, uh, they'll just listen and not do anything about it. You know, where they, they have no reaction. They'll oh, just yeah, it, it does take people some time. Like I had this guy who uh, has been in a wheelchair since he was like 16, 17 years old, muscular dystrophy. Okay. I say, well, let's get you out of the chair. Let's go. Let's get you walking, man. It's just hard to like, process. Oh my God. Yeah. He hasn't walked in how many years? 10 years, maybe? No, he's, he's 40 something. So Okay, so he hasn't walked in 20 something years. Right. And so I'm confident. And right. that rubs people the wrong way. They don't know how to take it. They either get offended, insulted, or they just... Right. You know, in their mind, they call me a quack. They leave me alone. But my thing is, how do you know? Yeah. Has the medical monopoly helped you in 24 years? Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and how do you know? How does this gentleman know that through my 120 day program, through the Reese reversal system that he can't walk in four to six months? How does he know? He has no clue. Unless he tries. Unless he tries. And that's the thing to get people to try because they've been brainwashed. They hear what you have to say. You tell them, well, within 120 days, you're going to see great results and you're going to start seeing a reversal of your conditions. Uh, you know, I think you also make it clear that this is a lifetime commitment. This is a lifestyle change. You just can't do the 120. Feel, start feeling better. Start, you know, looking better. And then all of a sudden go back to what you were doing before, mm -hmm. you know, because then, you know, oh, then it's, you know, it, that didn't work for me. You know, it's just like people who go on diets, right? They lose all the weight and they say, wow, I feel great. This was a great diet. And then a month later, after they've gone back to their old habits, oh, that diet didn't work. That's a terrible thing. Mm hmm and they forget about the time when they were actually doing it. And, and I think a lot of the difference between you, what you do and let's say what other, some other um, health people do is this is all virtual. You put the onus on the, the uh, patient. Right. It's not something where they're going to come in and visit you and you know you're going to look at them and go oh okay well you need to do this you need to do that and you're going to take blood i mean you do take blood but it's it's not traditional it's you know a lot of the the people have to realize the part of the thing is to get you to realize that you need to take responsibility for your own health and stop putting it in the hands of the medical monopoly. Right. And, and a lot of people, that is the biggest hurdle because you're not there holding their hand. You're not like you said last week, the osteopath or, or the physical therapist who's going to come in and manipulate your joints for you, you know, and, mm. or crack your back for you. This is like, we have people to help you. You can always get in touch with them. We have three different counselors on board, mm -hmm. depending on what area you need help in. They're always available to you during the 120. But again, when you hang up the phone with them, it's up to you to do what they tell you to do. Right. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nope. It's just like if you want abs, you got to go to the gym. You got to do a specific diet. You got to right. put the work in. Yeah, it's like we talked last week. You could have all the mindfulness in the world and start giving affirmations. I have a six pack. I have a six pack. I have a six pack. You know what you're going to get end up with is a six pack of Budweiser. <laughs> That's you know you got to be specific and you got to put in the work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no. So 
for uh, for you, Rhonda, show up on November 5th. Don't be nervous. It's just a few hours out of your life. Listen to what Dr. Reese has to say. And like you said, I wouldn't call it magic, but we call it miracles, you know? Mm -hmm. And and like I, I've been with you through this journey pretty much since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I've no, I've had some great healing happen in my life. Uh, and I know other people who have had some great things happen to them, just not even from doing, just from starting it, just from the nutrition alone, you know? Um, so just come with an open mind, enjoy the day, and then take it from there. And, and, there'll, and there'll be a mic too. There'll be a second mic. So she can come up and ask me questions if she wants. Okay. But don't expect any uh, rabbits coming out of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You never know, right? Um, okay. This is from About Love on IG. And she asks, or he, what is postural therapy like? Mm. It's like taking yoga and Pilates and calisthenics, stretching, stretching, and putting it all together into a protocol. Right. And that's the difference. It's protocol based. Right. So, it's, yeah. Uh, a postural therapist can write a protocol based on your situation, which we evaluate through P rays. Then you do the routine 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening. And every two weeks we switch it up based on your P rays. Right. And it's, it's miraculous in the sense that you can get some healings very quickly. Mm -hmm. You could also get some discomfort very quickly. Cause you're moving things around that have been stuck. Right. I have, I'll tell you straight up. I, uh, I have neck pain for the last two weeks because that's what I'm working on. I'm working on my cervical flexion. I have cervical flexion. I have lordosis of the cervical spine from working on this computer for the last 25 years. And so I'm reversing that. And it's a very slow process. Right. And when you're moving things, you you might run into some discomfort. It's the same concept as detoxification. Mm -hmm. Right. People get sick when they detox. Yeah. So I'm not in tremendous pain. It's just a little bit of discomfort. It's like, ah, you know, but it, you know, it's getting better and that's postural therapy in our 120 program. The goal is to get people out of pain, right? The reversal, depending on what they have may take longer. Right. If they have type two diabetes, so that, that reverses fast fibromyalgia that reverses fast you know, some things reverse fast and some things take a little longer. Right. Right. And you just have to be patient with it. It's, but what would you rather do live with the pain or again, try something new. And if you're some, a person who's already doing yoga, stretching calisthenics, this should be easy. This should be a piece of cake for you. And what else is there to do anyway? In the first 15 minutes in the morning. Right. No. What and else I is there to the do anyway? My, mo the exercises. my motto, one of my mottos on life is there's nothing to do except have fun, be helpful, and work on yourself. Right. And this falls under the category of working on yourself. Yeah. Improving yourself. Improve. Now, do you need any special equipment to do postural therapy? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, slant boards are key. Um, the block, so you could do static back, is key. Although some people use an ottoman or a couch. I use a chair. Use a chair. Um, 
of course, there's there's the tower. I mean, we don't put people in the tower in the 120 program. That's that comes after, but the tower is like the the ultimate, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The tower is the ultimate because it releases your psoas muscle, mm. and your psoas muscle. We'll do an episode on the psoas at some point. The psoas muscle is the king of muscles. It is the Dan data of your body and it's so unique compared to any other muscle in the body because it covers three there's biarticular uh, muscles which means it, it's multi-joint mm -hmm. but very rarely is there one that covers so much right so as starts at the bottom of the thoracic and then also connects to the lumbar and then comes down to the inside of the femur. Wow. So it's basically connecting your upper body to your lower body. Mm. And it's in it. And the other thing that makes it different is it's deep. It's a posture muscle. It's not like your bicep, which is on the outside. Right. Or your trapezius, which is on the outside. Keep in mind, your trapezius is on the outside. But underneath that is all these other muscles, which we call posture muscles, the deep muscles. The psoas is deep. You can ask a masseuse. They can't touch it. You can't touch the psoas muscle. It's that deep. And so the, the tower releases the psoas, and a lot of our problems come from that psoas muscle. And it's big part of your root chakra if we're going to get energetic so right 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 the tower it sounds kind of like you know a torture thing yeah <laughs> well you 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 sit in it for well you got to do both legs so you know 30 minutes each leg that's 60 minutes on the floor wow well you could read a book you could watch you know yeah. you, can do, you can do things while you're doing meditate yeah yeah Watch this podcast. Listen to listen, listen to, it. to put it on your head. Joe. You got to get a tower. You got to. Right. I tower. don't have. I wish I had room for a tower here. I would no, like a radio all, tower. No, it's not that big. It's it's uh maybe two and a half feet high, oh. and maybe six inches long. Well, like tell this. the company to send me one. Uh, you know, I'll take that for my pay, and uh, we'll be. Here. <laughs> <laughs> ship it right down all right and of course i will eventually get all that equipment but you know certain things have to happen in life yeah but i've found great results from the the postural therapy i do so uh i feel like i feel much much better and much gotta better. work on this way back it's getting better static back does a, a lot of good for that so that's postural therapy if you know what yoga is you uh you will slip right into postural therapy okay this is lana on facebook and she's responding to you about a condition reversal so you saying oh here we go here's the trigger you saying that fibromyalgia is an easy reversal is insulting if you knew everything i've done to work on my pain you wouldn't say that you should watch your words. Oh, Kevin, you got scolded. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> well, I would say if you knew how much work I've put into the human body and understanding it, then you wouldn't make that comment because I know how to reverse fibromyalgia. It's easy. Right. Fibromyalgia was reversed in animals 100 years ago. Right. Why? Because if the muscle, if the animals have muscle dysfunction and soreness, then humans can't sell them. They can't slaughter them. They, they can't have proper livestock. True. The farmers, the farmers have to cure the disease and the animals in order to have a good business. In that they have fibromyalgia is a soft tissue deficiency mixed in with some postural issues. So it's a very quick reversal. 
So this woman is mad at me because she's taking it as if I'm saying you're not putting in the right work and this, you can, you can put in all the work you want. Even a dog chasing its tail is ambitious. You, she just doesn't have the proper information. I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying, hey, it's an easy reversal. And, and it, it brings us back to what we started with. If what you are, what is the definition of insanity, right? Keep doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. You're putting in the work that the medical monopoly is telling you to put in. And even if you're doing your own research, like you she said, might not be though, Joe, she might go to chiropractors. She might, right. Go to this is what I'm saying. You're only getting a piece of it. You might go to chiropractors, right? But what is that chiropractor telling you about nutrition? What is that chiropractor telling you about mindfulness and how your mental state affects your physical state? You know, like you say, it's usually they, they'll get one piece of the puzzle, but to get all three is where the real healing comes in. That's right. So a chiropractor might give you some relief, but you're going to have to go back in another week. And you're going to, you know what I mean? You're going to have to keep getting that done. And, you know, you may find relief from some type of painkiller, aspirin, muscle relaxer or whatever. But then again, how you're going to have to keep taking that. And mm -hmm. along with taking drugs come side effects. So it's, you know, if what you've been doing isn't working, what is it going to hurt to even listen? I mean, some of these people don't, whether they go out and try it or not, they don't even want to hear what you have to say. No. They don't even want to listen. They're going to snap right and fight it right away. You know what it's going to take, Joe? It's going to take someone they know coming to right. the clinic, getting a reversal, and then they want to scream on the top of the mountains. And then they go, huh, really? And then they, you know, then they... Yeah, you know, they hop on the uh, the old bandwagon, you know. Someone they know and trust. And, and that, I understand. That's... I understand, but I mean, people just got to do their research. Uh, there's a really big peace over pain rabbit hole. I mean, we've created so much information. You could spend three to seven hours watching our podcast watching reading the book obviously you could even hop on the phone with tamra or amber talk to a coach like put your due diligence in and if you don't believe something go research it yourself mm -hmm. you know if you oh well, you know if you think oh gluten is fine i'm not celiac well then go research the dangers of gluten and what it does to your body the info is out there well, for, you know, if you don't believe me, go. And I've, I've always been that way, too, because, you know, I'm the type of person who likes to wake people up and kind of shake up their belief systems. Um, and when they come at me, I just say, hey, listen, Google this. You want to even find my sources? Here's my sources. Go research it for yourself and then come back to me. If you don't believe me, believe 10 other people, mm -hmm. you know, because that's how humans are. Mm -hmm. They need that confirmation yeah. from other people. Yeah. And, and again, except like, with God. Yeah, right. They all believe in God without, without well, <laughs> are they one in the same? <laughs> but right. So uh, we're sorry for triggering you, but if you want, you know, have a little bit more of an open mind. Okay. This comes from Lucy. Okay. Can you say more about what comes under the fake food category? Yeah. I understand that fake meat is not good for me. And so is MSG, but what else? Okay. Let me talk about fake meat real quick because it's a problem Big because time. it's full of oil and we know oil is on the poor four list. So it's just bad news bad news it really is it really i read the ingredients kevin and it's it's helping the oil industry stay alive right now what else is in fake food fake food is going to be anything that isn't whole 
So it's almost anything in a box, almost anything in a bag, a jar, maybe not. The only ingredients that are kind of allowed would be salt and water. Like for example, sauerkraut, that's going to be fermented cabbage with salt and water. Right. That's, it's still a whole food. It's still good to go. You can have sauerkraut. It's healthy. Right. But you got to make sure that there's no sugar in there, high fructose corn syrup or any other word. Here we go. That's an, uh, that is an example, as far as I'm concerned, of one of the perfect examples of a fake food. Mm-hmm. It is literally fake sugar. Yep. It is fake sugar. So if you turn around the box and you see high fructose corn syrup, wheat protein, yeah. uh soy protein hydrogenated oils yeah do, do you understand what they're doing here they're not only it's not only oil but they're putting it through a hydrogen process yeah. you know I, I saw another thing called inverted sugar what the hell is inverted sugar <laughs> you know so if you're looking at the ingredients and you're saying what the hell is this stuff that I'm putting in my body? Then you ought to put that package down. We're talking things like hamburger helper. We're talking things like pop tarts and cereal. I mean, if it's not for, you know, cereal is, is a, just a glop that they press out into, into flakes. And then they dry it of some, like think about like uh, fruit loops. Right. Come on. One of my old sayings was explain to your kids that there's no fruit in fruit in loops, fruit loops. Yeah. right so yeah. i mean and it can even come with something as simple as cheese i remember my mother used to say to me you know we go to the shopping supermarket she said oh get me some cheddar cheese i bring her over the orange cheddar cheese right and she'd go put that back and i go why she goes have you ever seen a cow give orange milk and, and it's like no i haven't she goes all right then it's got it's got it's colored it's got coloring in it put that down go get me the white cheese you you do have to be careful of dyes quick story it's just crossed my mind i was at an event a long time ago and people were hodgepodge in networking you know the first question when you're networking is what do you do and this person was like oh i I, I work, I work at a food corporation, you know, doing the dyes, mm-hmm. you know? And so here's this person who's in the lab creating the flavors and the dyes for the fake food. I mean, it's big business and this food is very affordable. Right. Because and that's fake. what makes it, uh, suitable for poor people Mm -hmm. and go figure poor people also typically are on state aid and which means they get free medical monopoly right so there's a big conspiracy here because now the medical monopoly makes ubers and ubers and ubers of money you know let's get the poor people sick and then they can cash in their free medical monopoly right and the, and you know uh, the the taxes are going towards their free medical monopoly but the medical monopoly is getting actual money and so this is what keeps the medical monopoly afloat oh yeah every medical monopoly doctor that is taking state insurance gets paid they may not get paid as much as a non medical you know a non let's say state insurance, insurance company, they all get paid. Mm -hmm. The state reimburses them that money. So it's, again, that's probably where your C C students come in. (laughs) Because, right, you're limited to what doctors you can go to. And I'm sure the A A students, they don't want, they don't want state people. They want people who are going to pay deductibles. They want, you know, because the deductible goes to them. Hmm. so they want you know they want that so it, and you're right it is a way to keep the lower income people unhealthy 
because mm -hmm. soda soda would be you want to know what a fake food is soda oh yeah is a fake food yeah right there and even, I'm not even on our list even something like seltzer water fake food i mean right. you didn't you didn't go to a spring and get seltzer water yeah you know it's you know, people like to use the term uh, processed. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that term because butter's processed, sauerkraut is processed. Everything is processed pretty much some way or another. That's why I use the term fake. Right. Is it fake? It doesn't happen in nature and it doesn't come from something right. natural. It's if a you're combination a... of ingredients that make something. Yeah. Rice is real. Beans are real. A steak is real. Apples are real. Sauerkraut is real. Broccoli is real. This is real food. It's one right. ingredient food that our body can handle. Now, where do you put like cakes and cookies? Cakes is and fake. It's right because it's flour, oil, mm -hmm. chocolate. You know, yep. it's a bunch of things put together. Yeah. Uh, here and there, you can find something that's like three ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, or make it yourself. Flowers. Lara, Lara bars, Lara bars are something that I recommend to people sometimes because they're like two, sometimes five ingredients and it's all natural. And it's just like, they'll take some dates, mash them up. They'll take some cashews, mash them up. And then they just throw them in a dehydrator until it's a hard, kind of like a candy bar. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good alternative to a candy bar or a protein bar that's full of you know, 20 ingredients. So, so you, that would even come under the fake food category, candy bars, protein bars. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, it, and, and I know the rule of thumb that you used to tell me is anything more than five ingredients, put it away. Typically. And, and especially if you can't pronounce one of the ingredients, you know, I look at most of the stuff I buy and it's like three things, you know, salt, water, and then whatever is, it's, it's also important to note, too, that there is a gray area and something like pasta falls into that gray area because mm -hmm. pasta isn't real, but, yet but it only has one ingredient, ingredient. Flour and water. Yeah, it's, it's flour, water, and then it's like dehydrated into this. Sometimes eggs they put in it, too. Yeah, depends on which one, but it, it's not... And bread it's is natural another ingredients, but it's mixed together. Bread is another one. Like a real bread should have five or less ingredients. Uh, yeah, flour, water, eggs, pretty yeah, much. And yeah, salt. and salt, right. That's original bread. But if you go into the store right. and pick up Wonder Bread, yeah, that's not bread. It's really not. And they're saying that. They no, shouldn't and even, and even call it bread. Even back in the day, I would even say 300 years, two, 300 years ago, they would also put bone meal in the bread mm, so that we can it. get our calcium and our hard tissue good. And now they just put powder in it. Now they're just using flour. Everything's wheat. Everything's gluten. Bleached flour. Get Bleached. that. Yep. Bleached. Yeah. Come yep. on, and, man. And then they fortify because they took all the, there's no nutrition. So they're like, oh, we got to add something. Let's add And that's some. why I say it's good with calcium and good yeah, yeah. for your bones and yeah, all that because they're adding it in. Mm -hmm. I remember I used I saw a video on on YouTube once about cornflakes and where they took a magnet and they they could move the cornflakes around with a magnet cuz you know how they say cornflakes are real good they're iron fortified. You know how they fortify it? Huh. They literally throw iron yeah. iron flakes into it. Mm. I mean is this that you might as well just take an iron supplement. So Lucy, I hope that answers your questions. Fake food is something pretty much created by man. <laughs> yeah. With not, you know, I mean, you can look at some of these things that there's not a single natural ingredient in it. Mm. And that's why it is so cheap. Right. All right. I think Lucy had a second question. Sure. And this is an interesting one because I'm in, interested in myself. Another question about enzymes. I understand vitamins, minerals, herbs, hormones, but what are enzymes and why do we run out of them? Okay. Well, enzymes would be similar to hormones. It's coming from 
you know, it's coming from an organ pancreas. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at soft tissue nutritional deficiencies because any organ or gland is soft tissue, right? So right. when the pancreas isn't working correctly, you're going to have a deficiency in enzymes. When we have a deficiency in enzymes, it's a, it's a big problem because now we can't digest our food and yeah. then that can create, you know, up to a hundred, 200 other diseases. Um, it's also important to note that human beings typically lose enzymes once they cross into their forties. So it's always a good idea if you're 40 or older to, you know, maybe pop an enzyme. If you're eating something heavy, if you're, you know, a steak or even an avocado, you know, something that's heavy fat, you may want to pop an enzyme. It's not a bad idea. I um, take them myself. Yeah. Well, you have was, to, you don't I have mean, a gallbladder. Right. Right. That's another thing. People who don't have gallbladders need to supplement with enzymes mm -hmm. to help break down the food. And I didn't realize that. And I was having all these digestive problems. Somebody suggested to me, maybe you ought to get some enzymes to help with your enzymes and probiotics. It was probably you. Um, and when I did start taking them, my digestion improved. And it's like, well, why do I need enzymes? And like you said, typically when you're over 40, your body starts producing less. But then we get back to the old thing. You used to be able to get enzymes from food. Certain foods would stimulate enzyme production, papaya, pineapple with bromelain in mm. it. Uh, there are other foods that have enzymes in it that will stimulate the digestion. I think ginger even, which is, you know, and... And again, we come back to the same thing. Eat all the pineapple you want because that pineapple is not as nutritionally rich as it used to be. So we get again back to the old thing. You're not getting the enzymes from your food. You have to supplement because yep. that is what your body needs to break it down. They exist within your digestive system. Yep. And I know you guys have certain enzymes that you recommend and probiotic. Yeah. Um, and again, with bile in it, you got to have some bile in it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's bad news. If you're not breaking down your food, it's bad news. And, um, even, even in the beauty on the, from the beauty side of things, like you're going to age faster, you know, your skin's going to get. And, um, and I think you and I were discussing this the other day, they've come up with a, a new disease condition the medical monopoly for low enzymes and they want to give you a drug for that mm -hmm. but for you know what i mean you don't know for all we know that's just the same enzymes you could go buy from you or yeah. at the health food store right you know and then when you get enzymes make sure you get a comprehensive one not just the pancreatic one there's a, the super enzymes like where you that it covers the whole gambit mm -hmm. because you can go to the store and these they'll be bromelain they'll be pancreatic enzymes and then there'll be other enzymes that they have and you got to just make sure you get them all mm -hmm. and you know um and again this, this could lead to pancreatic cancer or something right yeah soft tissue man yeah. soft tissue soft so, tissue yeah. i mean all four categories are a big deal of the nutritional deficiencies but I mean, soft tissue is probably the biggest from a from a real estate perspective because right. we're there's so much soft tissue in us i mean there's 700 muscles there's fascia i mean yeah, miles fascia, fascia. Yeah, miles of fascia and you got your intestines then right. you got your glands and your organs your eyeballs you know <laughs> Your, your hair, your skin. I mean, there's a lot of soft tissue. And if, if you have deficiencies, yeah. so much can go wrong. Right. And step one is just start with the 90 and then go from there. Mm -hmm. Get yourself to a good base. Okay. Slick Rick on IG hmm. wants to know, can you cure ligma? I don't even know what ligma is, Kevin. So. Ligma is actually a fake disease that was created on, if I'm not mistaken, Fortnite, the video game. 
You're kidding. So this guy's trolling me. Oh, so ligma is not. That's why I didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. Ligma is a fake disease in the virtual reality world. Oh, well, why don't you challenge him to a game online? But I, I think what, you know, the teachable moment there is that all diseases are fake in the sense that they were given a scary name mm -hmm. and really they're just nutritional deficiencies and or muscle dysfunction and or gut dysfunction you right. know it's caused some by combination. nutritional deficiencies right the six or root causes that we did a few episodes ago yeah besides nutritional deficiencies it's not only what you're not getting but it's what you're putting in somebody could come to me Instead of saying fibromyalgia or osteoporosis, just give me your symptoms. We can still reverse it. We can still work on it. I don't need to know the actual name. The medical monopoly name, right? right. You know, because who knows where they got it from. But uh, all right, here's one. Deborah on Facebook. Oh, you put out a video about people being weak. <laughs> In your video, you said we as a people are weak. The Vikings and Native Americans didn't have panic attacks or PTSD, et cetera. But how can you know? Well, obviously, I can't know. I was only born in 1979, but it's an educated guess. It's a high, probable, educated guess because I know that we are minerally and nutritionally deficient now. Right. And when we're deficient, especially in minerals, we have trouble handling stress. Okay. And now, and then on top of it, we have lack of mindfulness. So you got to figure that Vikings or Native Americans or barbarians cavemen. or medieval men, cavemen, whatever. One, they were getting more minerals. Mm -hmm. Two, they weren't eating crap. They They're weren't eating the plain fake meat, food. just plain old meat and vegetables. Meat and fruit, actually. Fr vegetables aren't even, arguably, aren't real. All right. Well, we'll get into that in another episode. And then, and then they're constantly under external circumstances, stress. Right. There, there's constantly you get stimuli. used to it. Right. Right. You become used to it. It's it's like. Now we're not fighting, right? We're comfortable. We're comfortable in front of our computers and our homes with our television and our air condition or our heat. And so now uh, a 15 year old kid, a teenager can't handle the stress of someone not liking them or um, falling down in the hallway at school and they're so embarrassed. So now kids are like committing suicide or right. they're walking into the school and shooting it up. Right. That didn't happen back then. No, no. If you wanted to go we, shoot something up, you shoot your enemies up. Yeah. And then the same with PTSD, PTSD, again, minerally deficient, letting the mind and the imagination take over and hijack your body. Uh, Vikings, barbarians, all these old warriors. There's no way. I, I, I seriously doubt. And even if they did have PTSD, we're talking one out of a hundred, you know, one out of a thousand, maybe even because they're in battle all the time. And they have they're, to live off the land. The living off the land, they have to hunt. You have to sharpen your sword, sharpen your spears. Constant be on the lookout for either natural predators, bears, or yeah. in the jungle, lions, you know, and then of course, natural disasters, the weather, the weather yeah. becomes their enemy right there, you know, so they had to learn how to know when storms are coming without the weatherman. We're, we're, we're just so weak now. We it's, we're too comfortable. All you yeah. have to do, all you have to do is scroll through your Facebook or Instagram feed and you will see people complaining right. about all sorts of things, or they're suffering with anxiety to the point where they can't function in the world. And 
this is a new new phenomenon and i can say from being an old person when i was a teenager when i was younger every now and then you would get a depressed kid who might try and commit suicide but it was not rampant no like it is today now it's rare and then the other thing is that kids um they're very caught in their video games and their social media so they're very in that digital world and they don't know what to do in the physical world. And, you know, it, it's why it's so hard to date these days. Like yeah, if I, if I'm at, on. if I'm at the grocery store and I see a beautiful woman, let's just say she's 25. Right. And I walk up to her and I start talking there's a high chance she's going to be like, you're a creep and walk away. Like creep, yes, yes, creep. Yes, yes, someone's yes. talking to me. <laughs> right. Text me, please. Yeah. Hit are me you on, on the Tinder? Are you, are you on, on dating the, yeah, whatever Not, those apps are called Tinder or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, Oh my gosh, someone's talking to me. You know, it's like, no, yeah. no. Contact me on Facebook so we can DM. Right. It, yeah. it, we're just, we're morphing into a digital yeah existence and this is what i call the digital world order and or the, the dwo i call it the great reset the fourth industrial revolution mm. it's it's and 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 you know now it's something that you know used to be a conspiracy right oh the new world order like you say the digital world order it used to be a conspiracy now they're coming right out and you know they're rebranding it as the great reset it's the same thing. It's it's living in pods, putting on the virtual reality. Dude, people eating fake foods, yeah, eating I, synthetic food. Yeah, I don't. I don't even. I don't even think. I, I don't know if it's a pop. Maybe it's a population control thing, but I don't even think we're going to be having much sex. No. no. In the future, we're going we're going to be having virtual reality sex. You meet someone that's a thousand miles, you know, a hundred thousand yeah. miles away. You, you strap on the suit. Reality. Yeah. yeah, you strap on the suit, you get some sort of stimulation, right? You don't have to worry about Take a it. pill or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, you know, this was in the movie Demolition Man that came out yes. in the 90s, you know? Yes. And, and, and Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum even came out and said, I think the future is virtual children. Why do you need to have real children when you can have a child on the metaverse? Well, we used to have virtual pets, didn't I we? I remember, or... I forget what they were called, Togos or something like that. Yeah. And, and half could, the time the kid killed them. Yep. Because we forget to feed them, you know? Yep. So yeah, it's it's a crazy direction we're headed. It's been predicted. You can watch any TV shows, even 1984, which was written in 1949, predicted fake food. Predicted that the food the humans will eat will be fake. Yeah. And that the only people eating real food, of course, are the people who are running the world. Maybe call them the elites. Um, but now they're trying to get people to eat bugs. I mean, I don't know what you feel about the nutrition of bugs, but to me, it doesn't sound too appetizing. <laughs> well, it depends <laughs> if you're in a survival mode. Uh, but we're not. We're not talking survival. Mode. I'm not living out in the woods. You apes, know, we're talking, apes eat bugs. Apes eat bugs. Um, right. I mean, we're talking about feeding them to kids. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I, I all I know is is that we're a very weak society. Yeah. A especially men i mean we uh, uh you got some really weak dudes out there and the thing with a woman is see w women are so adaptable right women are so adaptable they know how to step up right and be a leader but they typically only do it if the man isn't the leader because right. he's a little wimp because he played video games and i've seen it <laughs> Look, he doesn't know it. how to fight. He doesn't know how to right. fight. He doesn't know how to use a he gun works from home. He's a computer programmer. Yeah. He he's been sitting at the computer. Books. He doesn't know how to build anything. He doesn't yeah. know, right. you know, he doesn't have the chutzpah. He doesn't right. have the guts to be, you know, to, you know, to speak in a certain way. And then, so what's the woman do? She steps up and then, and then you go to the grocery store and you see these, these mm -hmm. these dudes Tenpec, yeah practically being walked down the aisle by their woman yeah and that, yeah that's always been a phenomenon they used to call them pws um back in the day but 
now it seems to be more prevalent. It was a rare thing back then. Now it's more prevalent. People have all been almost been programmed to be that way. And we can get into that as part of the plan and all that. But guess what? We are out of time. All right. So I just want to remind people to like, share, subscribe to all of us on social media. You can look up Dr. Reese. You can find him there. You can find the Peace Over Pain Clinic. Uh, please tell your friends about it. And, uh, you know, any, any last words? No, just uh, here to keep triggering. <laughs> That's it. Next week, I'm sure we'll have some more triggers. I know you had a good story you wanted to tell me about a friend of yours. And, and maybe we'll I, got, I got some news that I'll share next week or the week after. So there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes. And, right. you know, we're just just moving, keep trucking, keep keep expanding. And, you know, in order to to help people reverse their diseases. And for those of you in Connecticut, check out Dr. Reese on November 5th. You can see him live. All right. Till next week. Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.